Hello everybody. This is an extra teaching spirit flash. I'm calling it a spirit flash. <clears throat> I got to lubricate my throat here. Uh, actually, I lost uh, 17 pounds cutting out pop. But every now and then I treat myself to uh, a cherry Dr. Pepper, cherry Pepsi, you know. So this is from last night on the way home from a, a, a country jam. Cherry Dr. Pepper, mmm, yum. Spirit Flash. You know, you can read the word for 43 years, and the word is living and alive, and you can get a spirit flash. Never did it come to me so clearly as it did about a half hour ago when I was reading. And I went to Ephesians. First of all, that's one of the ways I teach. When the Lord called me, he said, be conformed to my likeness as a human being into my image. And uh, but he says, I want you to know the life and ministry of my apostle Paul, who I chose after the cross, who has written two-thirds of the New Testament. Now, Paul has written 14 letters. But here's a point that I bring up to my students all the time. Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was at the top of his class. He had letters from the priesthood to go to synagogues, to arrest the new sect called the way, the new believers, Jews who were messianic. They were calling on Messiah and Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, raising their hands, standing in synagogue, praising Jesus of Nazareth, the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, calling him Messiah. Okay, point being, 35 years of Judaism, and then the Holy Spirit, with Paul and Barnabas, starts the early Christ-anointed church at Antioch, approximately 40 A.D., headquarters by 50 A.D., and then for the next 300 years, apostles, prophets, evangelists, Bishops, elders, and deacons come out of the schooling in Ephesus, the headquarters. And the Ephesian letter is the circulation letter, base foundation letter to all the churches. So the Ephesian letter is actually the Lady Ocean letter. That's why you study Colossians and Ephesians together because Colossians and Lady Osea, which is the Ephesian letter, you're told to study those two letters together. And Paul can look back at 35 years of Judaism, 20 years of Christianity, which the Holy Spirit and Paul started, and he could write his last six letters. The last six letters are Ephesians and Colossians. 1 Timothy, Titus, 2 Timothy, in that order, and Hebrews. I believe Paul wrote Hebrews. Could be wrong. I stayed neutral on the fence for 20, 30 years, but lately the Spirit has pushed me over to Paul. If not Paul, one of Paul's students who know, knew Paul personally and watched him write, watched him teach and preach and dictate letters to the church. Okay, so I tell everybody which my Bible mentor told me, Nathan Scharf, who was Messianic Jew, Russian Jew, came in through Canada, had clothing stores in Cleveland, and I moved to Phoenix, Arizona to study under him in the last seven years of his life. I knew him prior to that. I met him in Sarasota, Florida, and I knew him for 20 years or more. And at, he passed on at 87. So he said, when you start reading Ephesians, start with the third chapter. Why? Well, here's the why. This is the spirit flash, all right? Four minutes of yakking. Chapter 3. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, nations, Gentiles, you and I, all humans that are not Jewish Israelites, Gentiles, Greeks, Greeks is, the, is a title term referring to the Gentiles. All right, Romans or Greeks are Gentiles. Okay, you Gentiles, 
assuming that ye have heard of the stewardship of God's grace. Stewardship instead of dispensations. So that means I'm reading a 1952 revised standard. King James says dispensation. The better word is stewardship. And we are to be stewards of the mysteries, 1 Corinthians 4th chapter. Okay, the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written a briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight in the mystery of Christ. That's the problem. Gentile teachers today, prophet teachers, have got more Old Testament scripture memorized than they do new. And they're more concerned with Israel, the nation. My Bible mentor who was Messianic Jew, moved to Israel and started a boys' Christian school. He became sick there. The Lord God told him, go back home and get healthy. I can take care of Israel all by myself. And the point is, we Gentiles who are born of the Spirit right now seem to be more interested in the condition of Israel than the condition of Christians in the United States, which is worse than Israel. Now, if we are Gentiles and we are joint heirs and we are to know about the mystery of Christ, why? So we can bring other Gentiles to maturity. And we're not doing a very good job of that. So don't spend six months in First and Second Kings and two weekends in Ephesians. Flip that around. Gentile teachers need to be teaching the Christian Gentile church the last six letters of Paul and spend six months there. In the now, the new, the second is better. The new covenant, part two. The New Covenant, Paul's letters, especially the last six. Hope I'm not coming on too strong for you because I'm telling you spiritual truth. Been a lot of phony baloney junk going down in the name of Christian out there. A thousand Christian denominations saying, we've got the truth, when they don't have the truth. God is sending a spirit of error for those who've missed the truth and don't love the truth that they would be drawn away unto destruction. Most of Christianity is no better off after 2,000 years than Israel was 2,000 years before the cross. And most of Christianity is going to be drawn away into the one world order, to antichrist teachings, because they don't pray and read and study on their own, or they're not born of the Spirit when they think they are. I'm telling it tough today. All right, let me read on. Eight minutes, I got to hurry. 3.3 three in Ephesians. How the mystery was made known unto me by revelation, not man's illumination. There's a difference. Revelation of the Spirit. As I wrote in a brief, when you read this, you can perceive my insight in the mystery of Christ's anointing. The mystery of Christ's anointing. Let me say it, major doctrine, one more time. The mystery of Christ anointing, authority, power, glory, light. Glory light, eternal life, immortality dwelling in the light. The pure glory light of God. Started in glory, it's going to end in glory, glorious and glorified, eternal in light. In the pure light of God. Okay, I read on. All right. To his holy apostle teachers and prophet teachers by the Spirit. That is, that the Gentiles, Kaching, are fellow heirs or joint heirs. The Gentiles. That's why you start reading in Ephesians 3. That This area, and it leads up to the central prayer of Paul in the third chapter of Ephesians. Now I'm turning over Colossians for the shortness of time here. I'm up to 9 minutes and 30 seconds. I want to read... 24 through the end, real fast. And I, if, if you're tuned into the Holy Spirit, he'll bring it alive to you. Now rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, you Gentiles. I added that. In my flesh, to complete what is remaining of Christ's afflictions for 
the sake of his spirit body or the one body, the church. That is the church, uh, it, of which I became a minister according to the divine office which given was given unto me for you Gentiles. I added the Gentiles right there. To make the word of God fully known. Paul didn't leave anything out. What? 26. The mystery hidden. The gospel, the mystery. The mystery, the gospel. They're connected. It's not a gospel of love and peace and everything else without the mystery. It's the mystery, the gospel, in the last chapter of Ephesians. And it tells you what the mystery is. The mystery is Christ in the last chapter of Colossians. We're to study them together. 26 again. The mystery hidden from ages and generations, but now, 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 today. Part two, the second is better. Study it longer than the Old Testament, that you might proclaim the mystery, the gospel, to Gentiles around you if you're a Gentile. All right, I read on. But now is manifest unto the saints, sons. to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles. ka -ching! That's my point. Not how great among Israel or Jews, great among the Gentiles. The last six letters of Paul. Read them, study them, know them so you can teach them. Have you learned Christ? Can you teach Christ? Have you learned the mysteries? Can you teach the mysteries? Do you know your hope and calling, you Gentiles? Can you teach your open Gentiles or uh, calling to other Gentiles? Got to go. 11 minutes. Finish reading. Oh, I'll finish reading right here. Uh, to them, God chose to make known what is the, the, how great among the Gentiles is the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'll stop right there. And it's on to maturity in Christ anointing in Christ. Not in Jesus, in Christ, the anointing, glory, authority, and power. Paul says, I come to see your power in the Holy Spirit. Do you have any power? There are not too many power teachers to the Gentiles in the United States today. Got to go 12 minutes. I love you. Spirit teacher, truth teacher. Are you, period, Eugene Bear on YouTube? Go there and listen to especially this teaching. Bye.